with you to the window of tolerance. The window of tolerance explains what happens when we get dysregulated. And I'm going to explain all this in a second, but it's a really fascinating concept that really helps us understand why we might experience anxiety and depression if we've experienced trauma. I notice a lot that people seem to think these things are disconnected. They say, I have trauma and anxiety and depression, but they don't realize that it's all the same thing and that the good news is that healing one helps heal all of them. So let's talk about the window. So we all have a range at which we can handle being aroused, and I don't mean in a sexual way, I just mean our bodies getting activated or kind of worked up before we step into a fight, flight, or freeze response. So we all have a different window. How big our window is, how much arousal we can take before we start to get dysregulated, that's different for everybody. But let me give an arbitrary kind of amount. Let's say your window is like this. So if you stay within my dotted lines, you're okay. You're not going to feel out of control. You're not going to feel a huge amount of panic or depression. You're going to feel okay. If you step out of this window of tolerance, what is going to happen is you are going to experience a trauma response because a trauma response is fight, flight, or freeze. So let's think of it this way. If a danger is coming towards me, my body is naturally going to do one of three things to keep me safe. It is either going to fight off the danger, it is going to flight or, or run away from the danger, or it's going to freeze, shut down, and hope that the danger doesn't notice me, gets uninterested, bored, goes away. Those are the three states that our body goes into when a danger happens. And when we go into that state is dependent on how big our window is. So if I have a very small window, let's say it's just kind of like that, I'm going to enter a fight, flight, or freeze state quite easily. If I have a larger window, it's going to take a little bit more of a danger to send me into fight, flight, or freeze. Now, fight, flight, and freeze, as you can see, they're separated. Because flight and fight are what we call hyperarousal. Our body gets more energy sent into it and gets ready to either run away or fight, right? We need lots of energy in our body to do that. So when we're doing that, when we're going into hyper arousal, what's happening is our breathing quickens so that we can, you know, run or fight better. Our heart starts pounding more. It's sending blood and oxygen throughout our whole body. Our muscles often get tense because they're, you know, getting engaged. You're in that ready position, right? From, from high school gym class, you're getting ready to go. So that's hyper aroused. Our body is ready to go. What's interesting is this one looks a lot like and is anxiety. Hyper arousal and anxiety are very interconnected. Now what about the flip side? If our body decides that it needs to freeze or shut down to protect itself, what's going to happen is our muscles are going to feel frozen. We're not going to be able to do anything. We're going to disengage from reality a little bit in order to keep ourselves safe from what's happening. Our mind will kind of disconnect from what's happening so we don't have to experience it at all. Now that hypo arousal kind of feels like it's draining the energy from our body. We're not connected to our body. We might feel numb, disconnected. That one is a heck of a lot like depression. So it's making sense so far that when our body goes into a trauma response that activates us, we go into anxiety. When our body goes into a trauma response that shuts us down, we go into depression. So let me draw this out for you. Let's say that you're going to realize you're doing your normal thing and you're within your window tolerance. So you're hanging out, you're doing your normal thing, you know, going about your day, just normal. But then something happens. Now, whether this is an actual danger that's happening in the present moment, or whether it is a trigger from the past experiences that you've had, your body doesn't care which one it is. It might send you into hyper arousal if it feels like it could flight it off, run away, or fight it off, or it might shut you down. When that happens, you'll notice your body kind of sneaking towards one of the two, and then when it drops into it is when you're really going to notice that shutdown. Or if it went up, that's when you're going to really notice that anxiety, that panic attack type of feeling kicking in. So what do we do with all this? Well, here's the thing. Once we're in one of these states, it's a little bit harder, obviously, to get out than if we just prevent going into one. So what we want to do is throughout our day, throughout our life, start to become aware, when am I in my window and when am I near the edges of my window of tolerance? When we start to get good at recognizing, okay, I feel like I'm creeping up and I'm hovering around here, that's going to be a really good moment for us to do something like a grounding exercise, for example, to keep us within our window. The exact same goes true for the opposite way. If we start to notice that we're hovering near hypo arousal, we want to do something to stay in our window of tolerance. Movement is a really, really good one. That helps keep us in our window of tolerance. So that could be going on a walk, that could be 
going for a run, that could be dancing, that could be gentle movements like rubbing your arm and just noticing the sensation. Movement really helps keep us in it, and if we're hyperaroused, if we're in that state, movement helps bring us out of it. Hyperarousal also needs grounding techniques. So we feel so much all at once that we need to ground ourselves into the present moment so it can help prevent us from going out of our window or help bring us into it. So hopefully you like this little video here about window tolerance, helps you learn a little bit about maybe how anxiety, depression, and trauma are all connected. That when we go through trauma, our window can get a little bit smaller, which can make it more likely that we experience anxiety or depression by Focusing on learning to stay within our window of tolerance, the cool thing is that we can actually increase and open up our window so that over time we have more and more capacity. Now, of course, I'm a trauma counselor. I am going to say this, that the best, easiest, most efficient way to help increase that window of tolerance is to do trauma processing around the thing that maybe closed your window in the first place. And maybe there's many things. The more trauma processing that we can do, the more that we're going to open them back up. 